let's just sew whatever. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, today we are going to be making the Estrella bag from Orosa Patterns. This is an amazing beginner bag. Um, boisterous beginner, I believe she called it. I love that. Um, so it's got a few pieces, five to be exact, for the main panels uh, that you piece together. So it's a lot of fun practicing that technique, top stitching. It's something you can kind of focus, but also zone out on, which is nice. Um, this was a super, super quick sew, and it is hardwareless. So if it's like 4 a.m. and you're like, yeah, I really want to sew, but I don't have any hardware, boom. I've been there. Um, it has incredible shape because of the little bit of Decaville light stabilizer that we add to this bag. Um, I absolutely love the use of pinking shears to kind of help smooth out the lines. Like you can't really see, I mean, you kind of can, but you can't like see a definite like shelf. Uh, so I just think it's a really ingenious design the way she thought of all of those little things. Um, we've got a slip pocket here. So if you don't like zippers or you're not good at zippers, you could just add a slip pocket using the same kind of method to kind of help get you going, get you started, learning. Um, but other than that, let's just, let's dive into making this bag. I forgot to mention, I was able to get these exterior pieces out of one roll of vinyl from my punk broidery. So to help reduce any bulk, I'm using SoFuse Plus, um, cut to two inches. And I'm gonna center that on this strap. Um, I've cut my interfacing two inches smaller than my fabric. That way there's no um, bulkiness within the seam of the bag since we are using um, a domestic machine. I really want to help reduce bulk, especially with the waterproof canvas. Um, so that is the SoFuse Plus. I just interface that with my iron super quick. And if you guys normally watch my channel, you know that I do not interface with an iron. I don't like it, but it's actually really quick. Okay, so I'm just folding the raw edge of that handle into the center. And then I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Using steam kind of helps really solidify it into place. And then when we sew this handle, we're gonna fold it in half and top stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the front pieces of the bag. I guess technically they're all front pieces. Um, I did interface this top piece wrong. This should go um, with the largest end here, tapering to the smallest point. Um, I was not looking at the pattern when I did it, so that's, that's my bad. the inside there. These are those pieces. There we go. So you're going to want to match up those long edges. You're going to put right sides together. I'm going to grab some clips and then a totally different sewing machine. So I'm like, what's going on? Alrighty. So I've got these pieces clipped together. I've got my stitch length set to about a four. We are using a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And we need to turn the sewing machine on. I'm gonna back stitch to secure those stitches. And continue. And then what you'll do is you'll butterfly that stitch line open and top stitch along either side of that seam. What I do is just kind of run my finger along the bottom as I'm sewing 
to help keep it open. You could also use a double-sided tape, but I don't think that's really necessary. side. Um, if you like the shape of the bag but you don't necessarily want to piece together the front, you could just cut out your exterior from the lining pieces also and then you wouldn't need to worry about it. However, that's part of the fun of the bag. I'm just kind of letting you guys know. Okay, so there is that piece. My top stitching isn't great because I'm really not used to this machine, but that's okay. We will keep going. And I didn't cut out enough pieces because <laughs> I'm dumb. That's fine. Okay, so that goes to that side. This goes to this side. So I'll clip those together. Um, so you're just going to repeat this uh, with the other side of the bag as well. Just sewing those pieces together, laying it open, and top stitching. So there are our two sides there and then we'll grab our center panel and this does have a bit of a curve to it so we want to keep that in mind as we're sewing this together so I'm gonna line up the bottom edge and slowly pinch my fabric pieces together of an inch seam allowance and I've probably mentioned this but I really really love how she has us cut out the deck of the light with pinking shears it's genius also again I did fuse my interfacing incorrectly <laughs> for this panel you want to make sure that the thickest part matches up with here so it goes thick to thin to create um, a nice spine on the bag is happening. I just uh, didn't pay attention. There we go. Had a little thread caught. So you can kind of see the bag starting to take shape. It's going to have um, like a curved effect and that's good. And then you're going to do that same thing. We're going to butterfly open that seam. And that just helps reduce the bulk in any direction on your fabric. this up, kind of laying it flat, 
If you are using all cotton for this bag, you could absolutely iron these pieces flat just to kind of help you there. And instead of lifting up the needle, cutting my thread, I'm just kind of looping over that seam and continuing on. Um, I think I'm using a size 14 needle and I'm using Guterman Mara 100 thread. I actually used to use this in my industrial because I thought it was the thread that was good for bag making, but um, it's not on an industrial. It's fine thread, but it's cotton, so it's likely to break down over time. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so you can see that piece is done. And just that little bit of Decaville light along the bottom really is gonna help this bag like have a shape. It's, it's so cool, it's genius. Um, and I really love that the designer was very mindful about how to go about it. And she made it so that you just use up scraps. Um, it kind of made me sad, I just got rid of all of my scraps had so many and they were just taunting me so all right and I kind of did a little back stitch over this seam here since we're not trimming it down it's not that big of a deal um, but just to kind of help reinforce it This is meant to be more of a beginner pattern or like an intro to bag making type of project, but if you are more advanced, you could do some really fun stuff uh, with this center panel. I thought it would be kind of cool. You could either add like a slip pocket or you could add like a statement like zipper pocket um, on either side of those seams. I might have to do a video like kind of having some fun with it. More fun than I'm already having anyway. Sorry about my air conditioner. It's so loud. is the main panel finished. You can see it's a nice big bag. If you didn't have enough exterior fabric, you could cut out, like I said before, the lining panel for the other side of this bag, honestly. Um, it might change the shape a little bit since we're not creating this um, like almost pleated effect, but it would save materials and time, so just a thought. I'm gonna go ahead and complete this other side off camera and then we'll get back to the bag. Okay, so I have folded my lining piece and one of my slip pocket panels in half. I then marked out with using the center a seven inch by half inch box. And now I'm going to put right sides together 
using um, like a nesting technique. So those two center lines are matched up. And then I'm going to backstitch to secure. And so one parallel line you can sew a box if that works better for you. Um, I just like to do two parallel lines. That's what works for me. And then we're going to cut this open and iron it. All right, so I've got a micro tipped pair of scissors. This really helps get into those corners well, nicely anyway and you can snip just right up to those threads, but not through them. If you wanted to, you could add a zipper, but I think this is awesome for a beginner um, who's not really great at zippers. You can still do the premise of a zipper pocket without actually adding a zipper, um, because I'm sure there are so many of you that never zip the zippers in your bag. Okay, so I'm taking this from right sides together, flipping it through, so that wrong sides are together. So you want to make sure there's your inner lining piece, there's the inside of your zipper pocket, or slip pocket, and I'm just going to press this using my iron using lots of steam. Okay, so there it is nicely pressed, and I'm just going to top stitch all the way around the opening. Uh, so again, if you were going to add a zipper, this is where you would do it. You could add multiple slip pockets to your bag. You can make one of them a slip and one of them a zipper pocket, you know? Whatever you decide. Alrighty. So there is that top stitched. And then we're gonna take the other piece of the lining panel slip pocket and put right sides together. I'm going to sew it with the right side of my lining panel face up. I'm going to flip it out of the way and then we are leaving this open to turn the bag through. So what I'm going to do is just fold both pieces up and that's going to create a nice edge for us to then close later. I'm just going to backstitch there and go all the way around three sides in a U shape. Okay. We can just move all of that out of the way. Then you just want to make sure that you continue with that fold. So I'm sewing through one, two, three, four layers here. And then you can trim down your seam allowances. If you don't want to, just make sure that you trim the seam allowance right there. We wanna kind of taper that off. And then when you open this up, not quite so bulky and you've got that edge already folded over. Yep. So we've got our slip pocket and the bottom is open. All right. Um, so then we can go ahead and sew right sides together for our lining pieces. sure you're lining up all the edges. We're going to leave a turning hole open in the bottom of this bag, which is awesome. You have these two openings to like turn it through. So we can go through the larger one in the lining and then close it up with the slip pocket. So I'm just going to follow along the outside edge.
dropping after that curve. And then I'm gonna start just before that curve. I am kind of increasing the seam allowance slightly within the bottom of the bag and then tapering it to the normal seam allowance at the top. And that's just gonna ensure that the lining of this bag isn't too um, large for the exterior. You want it to be slightly smaller than the exterior so that there isn't any bunching or weirdness. patterns state you can use pinking shears along this curve. I'm just going to leave it as is, but we're going to put this right sides out. So I'm just going to flip it this way so that we can put that into the exterior. If you wanted to add a magnetic snap, there are instructions in the pattern. But I just wanted to make a hardware free bag. It's kind of a fun brain melt in a way. Like you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so we're gonna line up these joining marks, these seams. If they don't line up perfectly, um, it is what it is. It's okay, unless you have really bad OCD, in which case just, you know, just redo it, it's okay. But I think, think I did pretty good. So again, this is not what your interfacing should look like this is what your interfacing should look like. Um, I just, I messed up. Trying to do too much at once. Okay. So we're just going to repeat sewing along the outer edge. Um, I am going to keep a consistent seam allowance here. You don't want to increase it along the bottom because that's going to kind of be counterproductive to what we did to the lining. I am going to backstitch over those um, butterfly seams just for reinforcement. You don't want to backstitch way too much or you could risk perforating the vinyl if you're using vinyl. So just a thought. has a nice shape with just that little bit of deck of the light. So cool. Um, so then we're going to put right sides together. Um, if you want to add a nameplate, you can do so. I'm not going to worry about it. I should have added a little woven label, but I didn't. It's okay. We're going to start up here, lining these up. You may need to use um, thicker clips than just these hair clips, um, but, oh, I have to add my strap first. One of these is going to stay unsewn, but I was thinking of trying what we did with that slip pocket where we folded that edge over. So I'm just gonna try it. We're folding this edge over, so that way when we turn the bag, we've got like this nicely finished edge in a way. So let's go ahead and work on the strap really quick and then we can move on to that. All right, 
So I'm just gonna increase my stitch length slightly. So. Along both sides of that strap. And so this strap has a lot of heft to it without a lot of bulk because of the way we interfaced it. So you can see it's not super thick, but like it has a, a sturdiness and it is holding its shape. So you could use Sew Fuse Plus from Cast Iron Handcrafted, or you could use Pellon 805 or 809 or 806, I think, um, or even Decaville Light, but that would give it a lot of body. So totally up to you. Um, we're going to mark three inches here and may as well do one, two, is the, I would imagine the other side gets shoved in three inches. Um, so I just made, made, I just made two little three inch marks using a silver marking pen that does not remove itself from fabric. Just throwing that out there. Um, and then whatever side of your strap you want to be facing out, you want to put right sides together. So this is gonna be the wrong side of the strap. I'm pretty sure, maybe, no. No, you gotta like reverse engineer it, I'm telling you. So you put that, put that there, it goes like that. And then when the bag comes through, I'm gonna go with my gut and if it's wrong, that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to flatten that. I'm going to lay this three inches in. And we're going to base that to the exterior of the bag. There's probably something to that nature in the pattern. Uh, but I didn't. I'm not double checking. I don't have it open and I didn't print it. But I'm pretty sure. But if not, it's fine. So we're just going to stick that into the bag. We can't add both sides of the handle or we are, we're just not going to be able to sew the bag. Um, if you were using hardware for a strap, you could add your connectors inside that seam and then just go ahead and sew the entire thing. Um, I think if you're using like a crossbody strap as well, you could do something like that, but we're going to follow the instructions right now. Um, so then we can go back to clipping all of these sides together. So if you were adding a magnetic snap, you should have done that already. Can't, you could actually do it after you sew it together, but it just wouldn't be very easy. Um, so there is all of that clipped together. I'm gonna rethread my machine. Okay, so we're going to leave this end here unsewn, but again, I'm trying out this little trick. stitch at that point. And we're just going to sew around the edges. 
I probably could take the table off my machine to make this a little bit easier, but whatever. No, I think I will. Okay, let's go. Make sure that you can feel your strap through all of those layers so that you're not sewing through it where you shouldn't be. Obviously right here we want to be sewing through the strap, but along the side here, oops, we do not want to be sewing through that strap. So I can feel where it is and avoid it. do like the pattern says and use pinking shears along this top seam and I'm trimming down this area to reduce the bulk because we're gonna flip it open before we turn it uh -huh. yes so it worked as I had hoped. I know stuff. All right, so I'm gonna use those pinking shears and I'll be right back. So I went ahead and I used pinking shears along the curved edges of the lining and exterior, and then I used pinking shears along that entire seam at the top. And then we can reach in through our lining here to pull out exterior of the bag and that just gives us a nice large opening so that we don't have to hurt our hands to try and pull it through. Um, I did use waterproof canvas for the lining of this bag which is probably a bit much since it's supposed to have more of a slouchy feel but it's what I know. It's what I'm used to. Okay so I'm gonna pull this handle connector piece through. So what I'm doing is just kind of sticking my finger through it and pulling it through. There we go. 
and so it's already got that folded in edge because of how we sewed it together. And then for the other side, it's kind of cool, you can just pull on that handle gently. So you want to press the seam of your bag, double check for any um, skipped stitches or um, anything you missed. Maybe your edges shifted a little bit. Um, now is the time to put those back. All right, so we're, I'm just very, very gently tugging on this seam. If you pull too hard, especially using thread like this, it might just snap. So don't do it. Okay, so again, just pressing against that seam. And you can see the shape that the bag has. Let's, why am I so like, that's awesome. I don't know. All right, so once we've double checked all of that, we're gonna grab into our slip pocket here pull this out. You can see we already have that folded over edge. I'm going to reach in and grab the lining pieces. It's like a finger puppet. Finger? Hand puppet. Just a puppet. Great. Pull that through. And then we're going to continue sewing here. Sewing that shut. pinking shears if you would like to. Press the lining into the bag and then we're going to sew this shut. Just kind of fold that back in. You can use an iron to press it. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Well, no, it should be good. Let's use some clips. pocket back into the bag. Oh yeah, I was right. So for the handle, I was correct in thinking um, right sides together. So whatever part of your handle you want to be face up, you want to put it face down onto the bag. Okay. So the slip pocket is in there. Pressing that in. Now if you used a uh, cotton fabric for all of your bag, you could go ahead and use your iron to press these seams. What I'm doing since I used vinyl is I'm just rolling these back and forth between my fingers to help flatten it out. Um, so this area here is kind of bulky, especially since I used waterproof canvas. What you can do is you can use a hammer to kind of um, smash it down, or if you have those like glass breaking crimper tools for key fobs, you could use that to help compress those layers to sew through them easier.
Okay. And eventually you'll be tucking the handle into the other side. I just, I'm taking a minute to make sure all of this fits well. Oops. Lift that up and slide it in. And you want to make sure that you slide it in up to that three inch mark. And honestly, um, if you have cut your handle and you find that you don't like the width, you could just, and I mean, you could trim the handle down and then stick it back in there, but I think I'm just going to kind of shove it in until I like the length, maybe. So yeah, totally up to you. I like that. Oh, I'm so used to that table being here. Um, so there is that. And then I'll just clip that into place. And we will start top stitching the bag. So I'm going to start on this side here. Clip jar back. Make sure everything's pressed nicely. Backstitching to help secure things. Oh, cool. Uh, so the thread I'm using isn't quite thick enough, so it just snapped. It's okay. Um, I would probably use like a Tex 45 or a Tex 46 for bag making in this machine. Um, but I don't think you can use any thicker than that, or you might throw out the timing. These are just things I've heard. I don't know. This is why I don't use it for bag making. Okay, let's try that again. So here are those crimping tools that I mentioned. Um, you definitely want to be careful that you don't hurt the vinyl, etc. But it really helps to just compress those layers when you're sewing over bulky seams.
our bag is finished. Alrighty, so here is our finished bag. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, I'm gonna be using this for like, I don't know, like a tote for the car to put a bunch of stuff in. Um, but yeah, adding a magnetic snap would definitely make it more of an everyday bag. You don't want your everyday bag to just be open, um, but like a festival tote. Um, this would be a cute shirt. No, I'm kidding. Um, but if you added that like long crossbody strap, um, I think it would be a really good sling bag. Um, there is the Swoon India Hobo, which isn't quite a similar style or shape, but it's a little bit longer, but I could see this being definitely a cooler crossbody style. So what you would do is just add um, like a connector here with a, a D-ring or whatever, and then add your crossbody strap. Or you could just make a full length strap that isn't adjustable to the bag as well. Um, but I really, really like the size of it. Like it's, it's not way too large or anything like that. It's super cute. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.